Hello and welcome to Excel Highway, your one-stop shop for all your Excel needs. Today I want to share with you part three of the mega KPIs file for the HR requirements. In this part I want to look into cost analysis KPIs like internal and external costs, cost per hire, and the average time to hire. Very important KPIs if you are in the HR field. In Part two, we talked about um, the diversity analysis, how to build that. If you want to check that out, click on the link above. And in part one, we talked about these metrics on number of workers and their gender and all of that. So be sure to check that part in the link here. So um, jumping back to part three, I'm going to talk about these metrics. now. To build them, I, I built a completely different database that's not connected to the previous parts database. And I will walk you through it. So we have the recruitment data. That is our database. We have, as before, the blue columns are the ones you need to fill in the data. And the orange ones are formula ones. So you have a position, which is a drop-down selection. Again, I'm using... Uh, the uh, data validation list equals position, which position is basically this uh, column here in the lists sheet. The department is, uh, I'm pulling with a VLOOKUP. I have the requisition date for the job, basically when the uh, position was uh, asked to be filled uh, or the, the, the process started, when it was accepted by a candidate. Then I have three different internal costs like training and development, recruitment and sourcing, and hiring manager costs. It's just an example, there are more, and you can add as many as you want. I have the total, basically it takes all three. Then I have two external example costs, like background checks and third party expenses. If you're using a third party company that finds and uh, supports the recruitment process, and also there's a total uh, external and there's also a total for both so internal plus external very straightforward the hired count counter I only want to see uh, positions that were filled so if the job accepted date is blank that's going to be equal to zero and if someone was hired that's going to be one I'm going to use that later time to hire very simple the gap between accepted and requested date in days and the department filter, similar to what we have in the previous video, I'm using, since I want to use the same uh, filters, I'm checking whatever department was selected here, and I'm going to uh, use that as a filter. So if you select a certain department, I will use that as a filter. And of course, if you select all, I'm just going to give it a yes to everyone. So the formula is, if I selected all, automatically put a yes over here. If not, meaning you selected a department, I'm checking if department over here is equal to that and only if it is I'm giving this cell the value of yes and the job requisition end month uh, I don't think I'm going to use it uh, here in this video so once I have all that settled, settled in uh, I'm going to build this helping uh, sheet called recruitment database which is where I build basically um, data for the charts I have the date total internal cost total external cost total cost number of hired workers cost per hire and total time to hire and basically I'm using the sum ifs um, to the table so basically I'm just looking for the sum ifs and based on um, the uh, end month sorry so I am using this actually so I'm using this column as the filter I'm using the last day and so is the date here it's representing the last day of the month okay so if you remember I'm pulling I want to see 12 months back so my last e um, row is going to be whatever date I selected over here and then I'm just going to go back to the last day of the previous month simply by using date um, and uh, referencing the next date and just using the minus one to give it 
the last day of the previous month. So I'm having, that's why here I just gave the job requisition month the last day of the month. Okay, so instead of uh, June, it's going to be the end of June in this example. So that's how I pull the total internal and total external costs. Here I'm using just math of both. Also summing up the number of hired workers and a very simple cost per hire is the total cost divided by the number of hired workers. Total time, again, I'm taking the entire time and the reason why I want to have a good average, so I'm not going to use an average uh, per certain month, I can do that as well, but here in my uh, final result I want to show the average time for whatever selection I did. So that's why I'm taking the entire time and then I'm just going to use the sum of all the time divided by the sum of all the workers, rounding that to get a round number, and that's how I get 28 in this example. Um, here I'm using the same trick. I want to have a um, header for my chart, so I have some sort of text, cost analysis, old cost per period, and I'm going to add the value, which is 81. 81 is that is that is the sum of everything, but I'm just I just want to divide it by 1,000, just so it's a nice number to view and look at it at KUSD. And this is also the chart, the text for the box that you saw here. So this is referencing recruitment database I5, which is what I would have over here, which is the text plus the value. And the uh, chart itself is very simple. All I did was take the um, this table, insert a chart, I'm just going to select whatever, doesn't really matter. And then I'm just going to have to go to recommended chart, sorry, that's easier, all charts. I go to combo, uh, and before I do that, I go to select data, and I don't want to see anything but the internal, external, and cost per hire metrics. Okay, so now I have all three. And then in the chart type, I want to have a stacked column, one on top of the other, and the line with markers. Okay, and that's how I get the same chart. And the title, I'm using equal over here, and I get the nice equal. And you can play, of course, with the colors and everything and that's I just copy that over here and that's how I got this nice chart and the average time I'm using the same trick I used in part one I have a shape and I use a formula and if you want, again if you don't remember how in the format shape you can just use the gradient gradient feel fill sorry have two colors one is blue one is orange and then you get that nice you know uh, range of colors in between so that's how I built the uh, cost analysis and total cost and uh, average time to hire uh, KPIs here in this uh, dashboard um, if you enjoyed the video please subscribe leave a like leave a comment let me know what you thought and I will see you next time take care